Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League is out, and there are so many takes on this, both good and bad. But one thing that is missing from the conversation that is personal for me is how accessible is it? Let's find out. I'm Steve Saylor, I'm blind, and I play video games. To find out what it is I can see and how I can play video games, check out the video here or in the description down below. Also, to make sure to like and subscribe to this channel, and if you want to support me financially while I get to make some new content, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash stevesaylor. I also started a daily morning podcast on there for paid members, so if you want in, check it out. So, obviously, I'm not currently in my apartment. I do apologize for that, uh, but you are still going to get a review from me, dang it, uh, even though I'm not home to be able to record it. I'm actually dog sitting for my sister uh, while she's on vacation. So uh, also as well, that's kind of why I also don't have any of my recorded footage because it's all on my PS5 at home. So thank you to Aaron, AKA Caboose, uh, for the footage that you're gonna see in the B-roll of this review. I appreciate him so much and go check out his channel. He'll be linked in the description down below. I have loved DC Comics ever since I was a kid. I grew up consuming anything that I could of DC. I grew up in that perfect age to watch Batman the Animated Series when it first started airing live. Hearing Kevin Conroy's voice as Batman for almost three decades in shows, movies, and video games, he is my Batman. And yes, I also played the Arkham games and have loved all of them. Well, except for Arkham Knight, but I'll get into that in a minute. So I was excited to hear that Rocksteady was making a brand new DC game, but this time with the Suicide Squad. Sure, we were a bit burned out on Suicide Squad content the past few years, but we all felt Rocksteady would land this thing in a way that only Rocksteady could. Even with all the rumors of it being a games of service and the previews of it weren't going super great, there was still hope, at least for me, that Rocksteady would still land this thing, even though the landing may be a bit rocky. I was also hoping that this would be the first Rocksteady game to add in accessibility, as when the last game they made, Arkham Knight, was released, the conversation around accessibility wasn't really talked about then. But after playing it, as far as accessibility goes, I'm sad to say the Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. It, the game landed, but our wheelchairs got destroyed by the airline. First off, I want to talk about what I enjoyed, and that's ultimately the the story. Now, this is kind of, you know, Aaron, basically my friend, who basically is on the opposite side of this. He didn't really appreciate the story. But for me, Rocksteady knows how to craft a good DC story. And by the end of the game, I started to connect with the ragtag that is Task Force X. The acting, the motion capture performances, and even the facial animations are literally top notch. I've never played a game that the character models look as good as they do. Now, you could have had many opinions on the story if you, if you played it, and you may disagree with how they handled certain characters, including Batman, a character that Rocksteady is intimately familiar with. But to me, and I'll avoid spoilers here, once one event happened in the game, regardless if you think it was done the right way or devalued the characters, my brain basically switched off the continuity of it all and was just bought into the game. I know that sort of people are saying it's in the Arkham universe and this kind of like, pretend, like this changes everything about what we know about the Arkham continuity. But to me, I sort of see this as more of an Elseworlds title and that's totally fine with me. And that's when I actually just bought into the game and that the world that the game wanted and I just went along with it to the end. Well, almost the end, because the game has me so frustrated that I didn't finish the game, which is reminiscent of my time with Arkham Knight, and the reason why I didn't like it is because I couldn't finish that game either because of its gameplay. But instead of being forced into a boss fight with a Batmobile stopping me from finishing Arkham Knight, it was the combat leading up to that final, final boss that made me quit. The gameplay is by far the least accessible games I've played in a long while, but still having an accessibility menu. This goes to show that just because you have an accessibility menu doesn't mean the game is accessible. The game feels more like the developers had a checklist of how to make their games accessible, and they checked off the list, but without fully implementing anything they added to make the gameplay more accessible to disabled players. For instance, there's a screen reader, but it barely reads any menus at all, except the settings menu and the in-game menus, it only just reads the headings and the button prompt. That's it. There's no screen reader for the HUD, the mission objectives, the weapons, loadout screen, the skills trees, or the map, and that's it. Like, that's the, a pretty much majority of what you're going to be using in the game. Another example is that there is a pretty decent subtitle system, but often you find that you may start one conversation and then accidentally overhear another, but the subtitles don't switch to the new conversation. It's still reading the previous one, and you may miss a lore moment or an important mission objective moment, depending on what you're doing. Another example is they offer control remapping and some options to change some tabs to hold 
holds, but the controls are so complicated at times that you're hitting and holding so many buttons at once, it's hard to keep up. And the biggest example is for Cognitive players. They have a photosensitivity warning at the beginning of the game, but because there are so many lighting effects and flashing icons everywhere, I had a hard time keeping up and my eyes started to fatigue after a long session because there was so much happening on screen. That's honestly the biggest issue with the game. There is so much happening without really any direction as to what to do. Many times in missions, even ones I've done a few times already, and there, because there's not that much mission variety, I forget what I'm supposed to be doing because the game doesn't tell the player what to do. There is so much you're supposed to keep track of that you're constantly focusing on the wrong objective before realizing what you're supposed to do. This is no more apparent than in the boss fights. There is so so much happening all at once. And because two of the main Justice League members are super fast, they are constantly darting around the battlefield that you are lucky to find them, aim, fire, and shoot before they shoot all the way across the entire map. And they have so many multiple attacks happening all at once. Minor spoilers, but one fight is, of course, you know, hey, you're killing the Justice League, so you're gonna fight Superman. He has ice attacks, laser eye uh, attacks. He lifts up helicopters and tanks to swoop in close to you and swings them at you like a baseball bat. He has a gas wave effect that makes you hallucinate can never really actually understand that how that's a Superman power, but whatever. He also has this massive area attack where he sets up a massive explosion that the shockwave uh, fills in an almost the entire battlefield that it can be hard to get away from before you hit the invisible wall of the edge of the map, and then you're caught up in the blast with what will take you up in your, almost your entire health and shield bar. All the while, you're supposed to aim and then shoot a counterattack to make him weak so you can all actually do some damage, but you can only do that at specific times, and he's also regaining his strength back because the sun is giving him energy, and the more energy he gets back, the less effective your shots become. Then you have to somehow find him flying across the sky, aim, and then shoot him. And you have to do this all pretty much the same time while also trying to shoot the ice crystal Superman create to get on the ground to get shields and ammo pickups, which are always in short supply. But you can't touch the ice crystals, otherwise you lose health. Then you have to do all this in two phases. It took me almost an hour and a half to do this fight. And this is actually, I had to bring it down to the lowest difficulty level. And I still had trouble trying to be able to do this. I hated every second of it. Now, I've seen other folks do this fight and can do it with relative ease, which goes to show, you know, difficulty is relative, always relative to the player. But because there's so much happening, you are constantly having to rely on your fast reflexes and quick thinking in order to figure all this out, the best strategy to complete the mission. Now, granted, not all combat encounters are like this, but I still found even the simplest of missions, there's so much happening, I can never get into a flow with it even after 15 hours of time with it. And don't get me started on traversal. All right, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to traversal. That was another aspect of the game that I found could continuously frustrating. I could never get the hang of it. Inst instead of grapple hooking and gliding your way around the city like you could in the Arkham games, you are leaping tall buildings in basically a single bound, to use a turn of phrase, but it's honestly not as smooth. It's deceptive. You feel like you could fly across the large areas, but then you run out of momentum and you can't gain it un back unless you touch down on any surface. Eventually, after seven hours, I kind of got the hang of it, but not without resorting to using one or only two other char uh, two characters because the traversal was the smoothest for me. King Shark being my number one and Deadshot being my alternate. Boomerang's traversal was okay, but I got stuck a few times and Harley's was just awful, which you would think with a grapple hook mechanic that was straight out of Arkham would be the best of the bunch. And that's what I hoped would have been my favorite before playing this game. But Quinn's traversal was so clunky and I could almost get zero momentum when swinging around with her. I know I didn't talk about specific features or options the game has. It's just, honestly, it's just a, a, a mess to try to be able to uh, travel around. The only reason why I like King Shark is because he has a giant jump that allows me to figure out where I need to land next. And Deadshot, only when I upgraded his jetpack to be able to last a little bit longer in the sky, was I able to be able to get a proper momentum, even with having to touch down and restart over again. But it's just, it's, it's, I, I wished for a fast travel. And their only fast travel is the justice, is a hall of justice. That's it. You have to jump all the way. And it's not even essential to everything. It's in the bottom right corner of the map. It's, it sucks, y'all. Now, all right. I know in this review, I didn't talk about specific features or options the game has for accessibility in this review. But to be honest, if I did, I'd be talking more about what the game didn't have than what it did. And talking about how the game feels to play, I felt was the better way to go in this review. But like, so I apologize if you're looking for any specific accessibility options or what the game does have. This is just kind of based on only just my experience. And actually also as well, I did play it on the PlayStation Portal the whole time. And it's not bad, but that tech size is really small even on this screen. But like I said earlier, I feel that the game took its approach to accessibility like it was a checklist they were required to do rather than doing anything in 
innovative or fully integrating it as part of their design process. I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. I know the developers at Rocksteady do care about the game and worked with what they had to make the premise of killing the Justice League and making this a looter shooter work, even though they were decisions that were beyond their control and they did the best that they absolutely could. I've seen it on social media, even right from the devs themselves. They put so much effort into this game. I just wish that whoever was the accessibility champs that was on the team had their voices heard louder because the game is a letdown for me and other disabled players that I do not recommend. I give Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League for accessibility a 1.5 out of 5. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video, even though it's, you know, in my sister's home and not my apartment. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, if you did, hit the like button and then hit the subscribe button so you can see more of my videos. Plus, to get an exclusive daily podcast for me, you can get it by being a paid member of my Patreon at patreon.com slash Steve Saylor. There will be a public version of it soon, but there will be a daily exclusive show on Patreon, so make sure you go check that out. Thanks again, and as always, I remain obedient to the oars. Bye-bye.